This week in comic book horror, we've got another horrifying haul of haunted comics hitting the shelves. Let's get right into it. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. C2E2, aka the Chicago Comics and Entertainment Expo, is going on this weekend beginning Friday, December 10th and running through the weekend until Sunday, December 12th. I'm going to be there in Artist Alley peddling my wares at table H12. I'll be signing and selling this exclusive pirouette poster of Carlos Granda's excellent cover of Pirouette Volume 1, as well as Pirouette, Grave Trancers, and M.L. Miller Frights buttons. I'll also have copies of my own comics to sign and sell, so if you're at the show, please look for me in Artist Alley, stop by, say hi, and pick up some merch. See you then. Let's check out This Week in Comic Book Horror, December 8th, 2021. Wolvenheart, number 9, is from Mad Cave Studios. The story is by Mark London, and the art is by Alejandro Giraldo. Going the route of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and Showtime's Penny Dreadful, this book seems to pair up Dr. Van Helsing with Tesla and pits them against the mad monk Rasputin. Sounds like a whole lot of historical and literary fun afoot. I'm going to have to seek this monster mashup out. Crimson Cage, number one, is from Artisans, Writers, and Artists, Inc., also known as AWA. The story is by John Lees, with art by Alex Cormack. How's this for a premise? The Crimson Cage is a retelling of Shakespeare's Macbeth, set against the backdrop of 1984 New Orleans as a down-and-out wrestler struggles to achieve the championship title match. Classical literature, swamp witches, and wrestling. What a combo. Lunar Room, number one, is from Vault Comics. The story is by Danny Lohr, with art by Georgia Sposito. This is a mob magic werewolf mashup focusing on a mage with mob ties who used to be a lycanthrope. Quite the combination of genres, and I like that cover, so who knows? It might be worth checking out. Vampyverse, number four, is from Dynamite Entertainment. The story is by Tom Snigoski and Janine Atchison, with art by Daniel Maine. An evil vampirella from another dimension wants to shape the multiverse in her image, and it'll take an army of vampirellas to take her down. This issue introduces two new versions of our thong-wearing vampire. That's two more soldiers to fight against Doom, and that's a whole lot of doing the fighting. Witchblood, number nine, is from Vault Comics. The story is by Matthew Ehrman, with art by Lisa Sturl. This issue signals the climax of this entire series. For some reason, the Dayglow covers turned me off of this book. Is anyone reading it? It seems to have something to do with witches and vampires battling it out against one another, tooth and broom. Sounds fun, but those colors on the cover make my eyes hurt. Nyx number two is from Dynamite Entertainment. The story is by Christos Gage, with art by Mark Borstel. This Vampirella spin-off has Nyx facing down her father, the Lord of Chaos, to find out the truth about her past and her heritage. And the truth promises to be a shocker. And that cover promises the usual dose of ass, ass, titties, titties, ass, and titties. Tales of Mother F. Goose, number one, is from Aftershock Comics. The story is by Frank Thierry, with art by Joe Eisma. Have you ever asked yourself how Quentin Tarantino would interpret the Mother Goose fairy tales? Neither have I. But Frank Thierry, Joe Eisma, and Aftershock Comics are delivering it anyway. See interpretations of classic bedtime stories cast with mob bosses, casinos, hitmen, and all sorts of criminal activity. This is something I've got to check out. Buffy the Last Vampire Slayer, number one, is from Boom Studios. The story is by Casey Gilley, with art by Joe Jaro. I'm just not a Buffy person. Sorry. Never watched the show. Never followed the comics. It just wasn't for me. And I never cared to go back and catch up on him either. 
So I'm not really the target audience for this series, which seems to be a sort of old woman Buffy set in a not-so-distant future following a 50-year-old Buffy taking on the same old vampiric threats. So I guess this is Sarah Michelle Gellar now. I know there are scores of Buffy fans out there, so I guess this future story is for them. The Death of Doctor Strange, Blade number 1, is from Marvel Comics. The story is by Danny Lore, with art by Dylan Burnett. There's a lot of backstory going into this comic. Doctor Strange wiped out the vampires a long time ago with a single spell, but now that he's dead, the vampires have returned. Meanwhile, Blade has assigned himself as deputy of the vampires, making sure they don't step out of line. But now a new menace threatens to take out the vamps, forcing Blade to either be the vampire's savior or simply watch them die. Sounds like a fun moral predicament for our daywalker. The Swamp Thing number 10 is from DC Comics. The story is by Ram V, with art by Mike Perkins. Swamp Thing is a book I always mean to check out, but for some reason, I never do. I hear good things about Ram V's interpretation of the Protector of the Green. This is part two of a new arc focusing on who will become the successor of the Green's Protector. Hopefully one day I'll get around to checking this series out. It's been extended to 16 issues due to popular demand. The Silver Coin number 7 is from Image Comics. The story is by Ram V, and the art is by Michael Walsh. Our cursed coin travels to Las Vegas, and remember, whatever happens in Vegas with the silver coin is going to be downright horrifying. Artist Michael Walsh provides the consistent art to this rotating cast of writers. This issue follows a loser who has an unfortunate winning streak. This being a horror story, I can only imagine where this one is going. Now that's one nice crop of horror comics. Any of them interest you? Let me know which ones down in the comments. That'll be it for today. Please chime in down below in the comments and let me know how on the nose or mind-numbingly wrong I am, or you can counter with your own review. So guys, you know how YouTube works. I'd love to be able to dedicate more time to this channel. I'm not monetized yet, so if you want to help me out, remember to hit all the pertinent bells and whistles down below. Want some spooky comics to read? I have two new horror comic book trade paperbacks you should look out for. Both Grave Trancers and Pirouette, collecting never-before-published issues, can be found in only the finest of comic book shops. If you're looking for written reviews, you can find them on my website, mlmillerwrites.com. If you really want to show your support, I also have a Patreon page, at mlmiller. Look for the link to my Patreon page down below. Thank you so much for your time, and take care. You're doomed. You're doomed.